Um, I am not Thomas Pinchon, <laughs> but I'm going to read a uh, passage that he selected. Uh, it takes place at a big party called Geek's Cotillion down in Soho the weekend before September 11th. Ah, uh, God help us. How sleazy is it? How has it come to this? A rented palace a denial of the passage of time, a mogul on the black diamond slopes of the IT sector thinks he's a rock star. It isn't so much that Maxine can't be fooled. It's more that she hates to be. And when she finds anybody trying too hard to fool her, she reaches for her revolver. Or in this case, turns and heads for the stairs, leaving Felix and Gabriel Ice to schmooze as they will, rogue to rogue. Does Nora Charles ever have to put up with this sort of thing? <laughs> Even Nancy Drew. The parties they go to, it's all catered hors d'oeuvres and beautiful strangers. But let Maxine try to step out and enjoy herself a little. Forget it. It always ends up like this. Weekday type obligations, guilt, ghosts. For some reason, however, she manages to stay out all night and close the joint down. Horst perhaps from secondhand smoke, regressing to his old party animal ways, is affably all over the place. Maxine finds herself tangled in and presently refereeing nerd disputes she can't understand a word of. She nods out in the toilet once or twice. And if she dreams at all, it's hard to separate from the great invisible wheeling around her decelerating, board fading to all but silent black and white till it's that time at last to see D. Tilda home. For recessional music, there's Closing Time by Semisonic, a four chord farewell to the old century. Former and future nerdistocracy slowly, and to look at them you'd think reluctantly, filtering back out onto the street into the long September which has been with them in a virtual way since spring before last, continuing only to deepen, putting their street faces back on for it, faces already under silent assault as if by something ahead, some, some Y2K of the work week that no one is quite imagining. The crowds drifting slowly out into the little legendary streets, the highs beginning to dissipate, out into the casting off of veils before the luminosities of dawn, a sea of t-shirts nobody's reading, a clamor of messages nobody's getting, as if it's the true text history of nights in the alley, outcries to be attended to and not to be lost. The 3 a.m. Cosmo deliveries to code sessions and all night shredding parties, the bedfellows who came and went, the bands and the clubs, the songs whose hooks still wait to ambush in an idle hour. The day jobs with meetings about meetings and bosses without clue. The unreal strings of zeros and business models changing from one minute to the next. The startup parties every night of the week and more on Thursdays than you can keep track of. Which of these faces, so claimed by the time, the, epics who, the epic whose end they've been celebrating all night, which of them can see ahead among the microclimates of binary tracking earthwide, everywhere, through dark fiber and twisted pairs, and nowadays wirelessly, through spaces, private and public, anywhere, among cyber sweatshop needles flashing and never still, in that unquiet, vastly stitched and unstitched tapestry they have all sat at some time growing crippled in the service of, to the shape of the day imminent a procedure waiting execution, about to be revealed, a search result with no instructions on how to look for it. In the taxi on the way home, there's loud traffic in Arabic on the radio, which Maxine figures at first for a call-in show, till the cabbie picks up a handset and joins in. She glances at the ID up on the plexiglass. The face in the photo is too indistinct to make out, but the name is Islamic, Mohammed somebody. It's like hearing a party from another room. No, Maxine notices there's no music, no laughing. High emotion, all right, but closer to tears or anger. 
men talking over each other, shouting, interrupting. A couple of voices might be women, as though later it will seem they could have belonged to high-pitched men. The only word Maxine recognizes, and she hears it more than once, is insha'Allah, Arabic for whatever horse nods. They're waiting at a light. If it is God's will, the driver corrects him, half turning in his seat so that Maxine happens to be looking him in the face. What she sees there will keep her from getting to sleep right away, or that's how she'll remember it. <laughs>